Welcome to Columbine United Church on a beautiful Sunday morning. It is so good to have the church family gathered together. I'd like to invite those who are on the center aisle to take the Black Ritual of Friendship pad. Print your name on the pad, pass it down the aisle, pass it back towards the center. Please know who's, who is with you in the aisle. I want to call your attention to the beautiful, beautiful bouquet of flowers up there on the communion table given to us by uh, Harold Hills in, in celebration of his mother's life. Uh, beautiful, beautiful bouquet. It is good to be back from vacation. Uh, my family, my wife, and two kids, we were up camping right near the Canadian border up in Glacier National Park. Had an amazing, amazing time. Uh, one night I was bit by a raccoon, woke up with this on my face. And uh, yeah, not bad. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was right on. That was right on. Uh, this is not gray. These are racing stripes. You know, so you, everybody, I've been getting all kinds of feedback, whether they like it, whether they're not. We'll set up a, uh, a pod in the back. You can put a buck in if you like it, a buck if you don't like it. Whoever wins, we'll shave or keep. No, I won't. We're keeping it for a while. Hey, you are here today to have a great experience. Mitch, tell us a little bit about what's happening today. Uh, this week, I wanted to give Steve and Justin a break because of the big lust sermon last week. I know some of you are still reeling from that. So uh, we're doing a piece that I wrote, God's Trombones. We did it once when I first came to work here about five years ago. Um, it's a piece based on a book by James Weldon Johnson. Uh, what James Weldon Johnson wanted to do is capture the memories he had as a child growing up in the South, listening to black preachers every Sunday. So he wrote this tiny little book called God's Trombones, reflecting the memories he had of the preachers that he listened to. And I was first turned on to it um, when I did a funeral at St. James many years ago. Uh, they did the reading Sister Caroline, which we'll do today. And I wrote five pieces about it. So we will incorporate elements of our regular worship service throughout the uh, morning with pieces from God's trombones. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is phenomenal. So introduce the, the guests. Well, we have choir from lots of different places, my theater world, other churches, Kristen, stole away from Welsher today to join us, so don't tell them she's here. They shut Welsher down because she wasn't Welsher there. They shut Welsher down because you weren't there. You, you're not there, the place falls apart. That's right. Yeah. So you know the guys in the band for the most part, those are them. Uh, Kathy Brown doing a lot of the work for us back there, thank you. And Dwayne Carrington joins us today in the role of the preacher. And Dwayne is gonna transform you. Dwayne is gonna transform you. Very good. So without further ado, Mr. Sammy. Oh Lord. We come this morning knee bowed and body bent before thy throne of grace. O oh Lord, this morning bow our hearts beneath our knees and our knees in some lonesome valley. We come this morning like empty pitchers to a full fountain with no merits of our own. Lord, open up a window of heaven and lean out far over the battlements of glory and listen this morning. Lord, have mercy on proud and dying sinners, sinners hanging over the mouth of hell, who seem to love their distance well. Lord, ride by this morning, mount your milk-white horse and ride this morning, and, ride, and in your ride, ride by old hell, ride by the dingy gates of hell, and stop poor sinners in their headlong plunge. Thank you. 
And now, O oh Lord, this man of God who breaks the bread of life this morning, shadow him in the hollow of thy hand and keep him out of the gunshot of the devil. Take him, Lord, this morning. Wash him with hyssop and inside and out. Hang him up and drain him dry of sin. Pin his ear to the wisdom post and make his words sledgehammers of truth beating on the iron heart of sin. Lord God, this morning, put his eye to the telescope of eternity and let him look upon the paper walls of time. Lord, turpentine his imagination, put perpetual motion in his arms, fill him with of the dynamite of thy power, anoint him all over with the oil of thy salvation, and set his tongue on fire. And now, O oh Lord, when I've done drunk my last cup of sorrow, when I've been called everything but a child of God, when I'm done traveling up the right, the rough side of the mountain, O oh Mary's baby, when I start down the steep and slippery steps of death, when this old world begins to rock beneath my feet, Lower me to my dusty grave in peace to wait for that great getting up morning. Amen. not, weep not, for she is not dead. She's resting in the bosom of Jesus. Heartbroken husband, weep no more. Grief-stricken daughter, weep no more. She's only just gone home. Day before yesterday morning, God was looking down on his, from his great high heaven, looking down on his children. And his eye fell on Sister Caroline, tossing on her bed of pain. And God's big heart was touched with pity, with everlasting pity. God sat back on his throne and he commanded that tall, bright angel standing at his right hand, call me death. And that 
tall, bright angel cried in a voice that broke like a clap of thunder, call death, call death. And the echo sounded down the streets of heaven till it reached away back to that shadowy place where death waits with his pale white horses. Death heard the summons and he leaped on his fastest horse, pale as a sheet in the moonlight. Up the golden street, death galloped, and the hoofs of his horse struck fire from the gold, but they didn't make no sound. Up death rode to the great white throne, and waited for God's command. And God said, go down, death, go down. Go down to Savannah, Georgia, down in Yagamakra, and find Sister Caroline. She's borne the burden and the heat of the day. She's labored long in my vineyard, and she's tired. She's weary. Go down, death, and bring her to me. Death didn't say a word but loosened the reins on his pale white horse, and he clamped the spurs in his bloodless sides, and, and out and down he rode through heaven's pearly gates, past suns and moons and stars on death rode, and the foam from his horse's mouth was like a comet in the sky on death rode, leaving the lightning's flash behind. Straight down he came. While we were there watching around her bed, she turned her eyes and looked away. She saw what we couldn't see. She saw old death. She saw old death coming like a falling star. But death didn't frighten Sister Caroline. He looked to her like a welcome friend, and she whispered to us, I'm going home. And she smiled and she closed her eyes. And death took her up like a baby and he laid her in his icy arms, but she, she didn't feel no chill. And death began to ride again up beyond the evening star, out beyond the morning star, and to the glistening light of glory and on to the great white throne. And there, he laid Sister Caroline on the loving breast of Jesus. And Jesus took his own hand and wiped away her tears and he smoothed the furrows on her face and the angels sang a little song and Jesus rocked her in his arms. He kept a saying, take your rest. Take your rest. Take your rest. Weep not, weep not, for she is not dead. She's resting in the bosom of Jesus.
and God called Moses from the burning bush. He called in a still, small voice, and he said, Moses, Moses. And Moses listened, and he answered and said, Lord, here am I. And the voice in the bush said, Moses, draw not nigh. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. And Moses stopped where he stood, and, and Moses took off his shoes, and, and Moses looked at the burning bush, and he heard the voice, but he saw no man. Then God spoke to Moses again, and, and he spoke in a voice of thunder. I am the Lord God Almighty. I am the God of thy fathers. I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. Moses. Moses. And God said to Moses, I have seen the awful Moses. suffering of my people down in Egypt. Moses. I've watched their hard aggressors, their overseers and drivers. The groans Moses. of my people have filled my ears and I can't stand Moses. it any longer. So I've come down to deliver them out of the land of Egypt and I Moses. will bring them out of that land into the land of Canaan. Moses. Therefore, Moses, go down, go down into Egypt and tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. And Moses said, Lord, who, who am I to make a speech before Pharaoh? Uh, for Lord, you know I am a Moses. slow of tongue. And God said, I will be thy mouth and I will be thy, thong, thy tongue. Therefore, Moses, go down, go down yonder into Egypt land and tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses took his rod in hand and went down and said to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. Poor old Pharaoh don't know who he's messing with. Poor old Pharaoh better think before he sleeps. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That's who old Moses is. Pharaoh, look out! And Pharaoh looked at Moses. He stopped still and looked at Moses. And he said to Moses, who is this Lord? Moses. I know all the gods of Egypt, I, but I don't know no God of Israel. Moses. So go back, Moses, Moses, and tell your God I will not let his people go. <laughs> Poor old Pharaoh. Moses. He knows all the knowledge of Egypt, Moses. yet never knew, he never knew the one and living God. Moses. Poor old Pharaoh, he's got all Moses. the power of Egypt, and he's going to try to test his strength with the might of the great Jehovah, with the might of the Lord God of hosts, the Lord mighty in battle, God, sitting back up in his high heaven, laughed at poor old Pharaoh. And Pharaoh called the overseers, and Pharaoh called the driver, and he said, put heavier burdens still on the backs of the Hebrew children. And then the people chode with Moses, and they cried out, look here, Moses, you've been, you've been to Pharaoh, but look and see what Pharaoh has done to us now. 
Moses was troubled in mind. But God said, go again, Moses, you and your brother Aaron, and say once more to Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Hebrews, let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. And Moses and Aaron took their rods in hand and worked many signs and wonders. But Pharaoh called for his magic Moses. men. And they worked wonders too. Moses. So Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would have no, he would not let God's people go. Poor old Pharaoh don't know who he's dealing with. Poor old Pharaoh better think before he acts. of Egypt, plagues of frogs and lice and locusts, plagues of blood and boils and darkness and other plagues besides. But every time God moved the plague, old Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not know, he would not let God's people go. And Moses was troubled in mind. Then the Lord said, listen, Moses, the God of Israel will not be mocked. Just one more witness of my power and I'll give hard-hearted Pharaoh. This very night at midnight, I'll pass over Egypt land. In my righteous wrath, I'll pass over and smite their firstborn dead. And God, that night passed over. And a cry went out of Egypt, and Pharaoh rose in the middle of the night, and he sent in a hurry for Moses, and he said, Go forth from among my people, you and all your Hebrew children. Take your goods, take your flocks, and get away from this land of Egypt.
And right then, Moses led them out with all their goods and all their flocks. God went on before, a guiding pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And they journeyed on in the wilderness and came down to the Red Sea. In the morning, oh, in the morning, they missed the Hebrew children for a hundred years, for a hundred years. They held them down in Egypt land and held them down the driver's latch, working without money and working without price. And it might have been Pharaoh's wife that said, Pharaoh, look what you've done. You have let those Hebrew children go. And who's going to serve us now? Who's going to make our bricks and mortar? Who's going to plant and plow our corn? Who's going to get up in the chill of the morning? And who's going to work in the blazing sun. Pharaoh, tell me that. And then Pharaoh called his generals. The generals called the captains. The captains called the soldiers. And they hitched up all the chariots, 600 chosen chariots of war and 2,400 horses. And the chariots were all full of men with swords and spears and shiny shields and, and battle bows and arrows. And Pharaoh and his army pursued the Hebrew children to the edge of the sea. Now the children of Israel are looking back. And they saw Pharaoh's army coming and the rumble of the chariots were like a thunderstorm. The whirling of the wheels was like a rushing wind, and the dust from the horses make a cloud that darkened the sky, and the glistening spears was like lightning in the night, and the children of Israel all lost faith. The children of Israel all lost hope. The deep red sea in front of them, and there was host behind. And they mumbled and grumbled amongst themselves. Were there no graves in Egypt? And they wailed aloud to Moses and said, Slavery in Egypt was better than to come and die here in the wilderness. Stand still, be still, show a little faith, you people. Hush now, quiet, ye of little faith, just watch. Do you not suppose the God of Israel can get us out of this place we're in? Your faith is so small, you think that Pharaoh can overcome God, Lord of all. Well, you're wrong. Be still, listen, can't you hear the Lord of salvation? See him coming, ye of little faith, just watch. Do you really think the God of Israel would turn his back on us here right now? Your faith is so small, you think that Pharaoh has even a chance against God, Lord of all. Wait and see.
But Moses said, stand still, stand still, and see the Lord's salvation. For the Lord God of Israel will not forsake his people. The Lord will break the chariots. The Lord will break the horsemen. He'll break Egypt's swords and seals, the, the battle bows and, and the arrows. This day, he'll make proud Pharaoh know who is the God of Israel. And Moses lifted up his rod and over the Red Sea, and God, with a blast of his nostrils, blew the water apart, and the waves rolled back and stood in a pile and left a path in the middle of the sea, uh, dry as the sands of the desert. And the children of Israel all crossed over to the other side. When Pharaoh saw them crossing dry, he dashed in beside them. Old Pharaoh got a halfway cross, and then God unleashed the water. You don't know who he's with. And the waves rushed together, and Pharaoh and all his army got lost, and all his host got drowned. Poor old Pharaoh should turn back, but it's too late. And then Moses sang, Miriam danced, and the people shouted for joy. And God led the Hebrew children on to the reach the promised land. Listen, listen, all you sons of Pharaoh. Who do you think can hold God's people when God the Lord himself said, let my people go? Let us pray. <laughs> Loving God, we, we thought we were just coming to church today. We just thought we were going to come and sing some songs and hear some scripture and a sermon and have a little breakfast and go home. Little did we know that we were going to come here today and be transformed. To be reminded of your presence here in this world. To be reminded that through this old story of Moses that you do not stand for oppression and brokenness and pain. And that when you see your people hurting, you intervene, you set people in to rattle the chains of slavery, to rattle the chains of oppression, to break them. And so as we are sitting here today, O oh God, feeling our own chains, our own shackles, our own pain, and we look at these chains and we think that, well, this is it, this is final answer for our lives. You beg us to hear something different. You invite us to be more than just inspired by this whole presentation, but to hear that it is the truth of who you are and how you work. And so you sent us your son Jesus to remind us yet again. And he taught and he taught and he taught. And the disciples listened and still didn't understand. And they asked him one day, Lord, teach us how to pray. And it wasn't a flowery prayer. It wasn't a long prayer. It was a short prayer. But this little prayer was a prayer of, of liberation that has echoed through the centuries. So God, we pray this prayer yet again, and we ask for the spirit of Moses and the spirit of Jesus to pour down upon us as we join in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive
Will the ushers please come in to receive the morning's offering? And God stepped out on faith, and he looked around and he said, I'm lonely, I'll make me a world. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. And then God smiled. And the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light shining on the other. And God said, hmm, that's good. Then God reached out and looked, took the light into his hands, and he, and he rolled it around in his hands until he made the sun. And he set the sun ablazing in the heavens, and the light that was left from making the sun, he gathered an, into a shining ball, and he flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and the stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world. And God said, that's good. Then God himself stepped down. The sun was on his right hand. The, the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod his footsteps, hollowed the valleys out, and, and the bulged the mountains up. And, and he stopped, and he looked, and he saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes, and the lightning flashed. He clapped his hands, and the thunder rolled, and the waters from above the earth came down. The cooling water came down. Then the green sprouted and the little flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed its finger to the sky. The oak spread out his arms and the lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground and the rivers ran down to the sea and God smiled and a rainbow appeared and curled itself around his shoulder. <laughs> Then God raised his arm and waved his hand over the sea and over the land, and he said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowl and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forest and the woods, and, and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. And God walked around. And he looked 
at all that he had made. He looked at his sun and he looked at his moon and he looked at his little stars. He looked on his world with all its living things and God said, I find you lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill where he could think. By a deep wide river he sat down with his head in his hands and God thought and, and, and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river God scooped the clay by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And, and there, the great God Almighty who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the, to the most far corners of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand, this great God, like a mammoth bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it he blew the breath of life and man became a living soul a man a man <laughs> So uh, this is where I'm supposed to say a word of thanks. So today I am thankful that Dwayne is not here today to audition for a job. <laughs> where did you find him? Dwayne, let us thank Dwayne for this amazing. Please be seated. I, I have preached for 30 years, and I have never, ever come even close to what you have done today. And I have heard preachers for 30 years, some of the greatest preachers that the world has ever known, 
and I have never ever have heard anybody come near as close to what you have done today. It has been a, um, a profound, a humbling, and an inspirational experience. I cannot thank you enough. Let us stand and sing. be seated and will our acolytes come in to please take out the light of Christ. Lord, I'm tired. I have worked today in the field reaping what I have sown and I'm tired. Some of the fruit were good and ripe and plentiful, but too many were marred by the diseases of hate and fear and judgment. All of them born from the loving seeds you had given me to plant and care for. But it was not the seed that was bad. Oh no, Lord, it, it, it was not the seed, but rather it was me, the sower, who, who was impure. The water I used to feed the plant was, was polluted with prejudice, and, and the warmth and sunlight I did not give freely, but rather kept stored up for another day, for tomorrow. It was I, Lord, who did not nurture each seed with the love of you. For I am my brother's keeper. I, I truly am my brother's keeper. Lord God Almighty, how can you keep loving me? Lord, I'm tired. I have worked in the field reaping what I have sown and I'm tired and it hurts. It, it hurts to see how much of the fruit in my basket is, is bruised and, and rotten. I see the destructive bits of judgment blemishing much of today's bounty where Warmth and sun did not reach the fruit. It is pale and dry. I ask forgiveness for the love I kept to myself did not spread to all. I'm tired from, from the hurt of knowing that I did less than my best. I'm, I'm tired from the hurt of, of knowing I let you down today, Lord. Lord God Almighty, how can you keep loving me?
I want to give thanks to your Lord, thanks and praise to your holy name, for filling my cup with blessings. My cup runneth over with your love, and I am humbled. I am truly humbled that I am in your heart as you are in mine each day. Who am I that the Lord God of heaven should remember my spirit each day? Oh, I am your child, Lord, I am your child. And that's it. Let's give these guys a huge round of applause. Wow. Man. Thanks, the choir. Thanks, the choir. Thanks, the band. Thanks, Dwayne. Now, hold your applause for a second. Hold your applause. Can we stand up? <laughs> so we share an office across from one another. I text you, you text me, emails. You got this done, you get this done. We see each other in the middle of the week. How you doing, brother? How you doing? And then you do something like this. <laughs> and I realize that I'm constantly in the presence of genius. Join us out in the Narthex for a time of fellowship. <laughs> 